Welcome to this week's edition of the Central Arkansas Football Report along with head coach Clint Conk. I'm Justin Acri on a dreary night here at Estes Stadium on Hall of Fame night. The Bears come out with a convincing victory over Nichols State 34 to 14. Coach, congratulations. Well, appreciate it. Thank you. I'm really proud of our our young men and we really thought we played a you know really nice second half to, uh, to kind of seal the victory tonight. Yeah, and it was uh, the second week in a row where you had to play in rain and we were talking this is the first time we ever had to play in rain at home here. Yeah, you know, 13 years, 140 some odd games, and uh, it's the first game that we've played in the rain here at Estes. And uh, so that was the first. We certainly had a lightning delay for about 40 minutes. And, you know, that creates some adversity. You're on the field warming up, and then you've got to come in and stretch, and you got to go back on the field and stretch and warm up. Then you got to come back in mm -hmm. and then go play the game. So, um, you know, both teams, you know, had to play in the conditions. Uh, I'm sick and tired of rain. You know, <laughs> of course, nothing compared to last week's. Um, monsoon but uh, but certainly glad that we were able to get the game in and, and and proud of our young men and our coaching staff well never played in the rain before here never lost on the stripes that remains as well so uh, protecting that home turf and it's so key in this conference well you got to win your home games if you're going to continue to be relevant and uh, and a factor in the conference race and you know we're six weeks into the season now and three games into our conference uh, schedule uh, you've got to defend your home field and then you've got to try to figure out a way to win you know, one or two on the road, and, and certainly that'll be the challenge next week. But real pleased with this win. Uh, uh, happy for our induction class into the Hall of Fame, and, mm -hmm. and for those uh, four or five thousand fans that actually braved the elements in the cold. Yeah. Uh, you know, to watch the game tonight. Yeah, there are late arriving crowds, and then there are small but passionate crowds, and that was the the situation tonight. But certainly, those who stuck around got to see the Bears put on quite a show, especially in the second half. We'll show you the highlights coming up. Sponsored by. Conway Chamber of Commerce, AT&T, All Clean Restoration Services, Crane Automotive, AT&T Real Yellow Pages, Sonic Drive-In, Log Cabin Democrat, and Zaxby's. At Zaxby's, all of our salads are made fresh to satisfy any craving. Like the blue, with a bold taste of real blue cheese and buffaloed or blackened chicken the house or the Caesar. With so many flavor pack choices, you'll be seeing salad in a whole new way. Guess someone forgot to tell us that salads are supposed to be boring. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Flooding happens. When it does, call All Clean Restoration, Arkansas solution to disaster restoration. Flooding, fire and smoke, tornado, and more. We are Arkansas's number one restoration company, able to reverse the damage of any disaster, large or small, and get your home or business back to the way it should be. Tell your insurance company you prefer All Clean Restoration. All Clean Restoration, proudly serving all of Arkansas. Welcome back. Before we get into the first half highlights, Coach, and uh, we did it on the radio broadcast as well. I want to recognize a few guys that had a chance to make their first start and, and certainly had some guys from last week that, that earned a little more playing time as well. You know, absolutely. Uh, Clay Murphy, the sophomore red shirt from El Dorado, started uh, in our four wides package. Uh, Alec Willis made his first start at center, being kind of pressed in last mm -hmm. week with Corey Howard going down at Stephen F. Austin. And, of course, uh, Dylan Winfrey, the diminutive, but uh, – uh, very athletic, uh, physical uh, corner out of Bryant High School here in Arkansas and ended up having an interception and about five tackles. So, And there were some others that uh, gained more significant playing time, as you mentioned. Uh, but uh, very pleased with uh, how those young men handled uh, the pressure and the preparation of uh, – you know, starting their first game. Yeah, without a doubt. And you did have to get all of your quarterbacks ready this week. Uh, Winrick Smothers suffered an ankle injury in the uh, SFA game, wasn't quite 100 percent at least through the week, and um, was able to kind of, as the game went on, he certainly got into the flow a little bit better. He looked awfully comfortable out there and put up great numbers. Well, you know, he probably only took about 30 percent of the, the reps in practice this week, and the majority of those were on Wednesday because uh, he has a late class on Thursday. Uh, we have to do something about that maybe. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, went out and completed uh, over 70% of his passes through a touchdown pass and uh, uh, showed uh, some athleticism to extend plays and even a, a called run. So uh, very pleased with uh, how he played. He showed a little bit of rust on some of the deep balls, but uh, 
some other guys made up for it. Yeah, I was misled all week long. He told me, well, we might see a couple other quarterbacks, and he probably won't run much this week. Well, you know, I guess you got to do what you got to do in the line of fire. Well, Jacoby Walker kind of came in and ran our Wildcat package and uh, did an excellent job with that. And, of course, the repetitions that Ryan Howard got, mm -hmm. our backup quarterback, uh, will pay dividends for us and for him. Uh, as we move forward in the season. Yeah, and Winrick did help one of his receivers get a school record uh, tonight. So we'll talk about that as we go on through. So let's get into the highlights. And won the toss and, and went directly to defense coach. And this is certainly, a, as you told me through the week, a much different Nichols team than we've seen the last few years. I mean, much more multiple and dynamic offensively and really effective throwing the ball. Didn't do it a lot, but they were certainly good at it, especially in the first half. Well, and I, I failed to mention uh, Marvin Mitchell, number 35, uh, the sophomore from Transfer from West Hills Community College, made his first start as well. But you can see here kind of matador defense, uh, poor tackling, poor gap integrity, uh, allowed them to get two big plays, and that was the theme in the first half. Uh, right here we had a great coverage call. Uh, we just got to come up with that one. But, but this was disappointing right here, third down conversion. Nice tackle there by junior uh, Radarius Winston. But we do force a punt. And... Uh, I thought uh, Jesse Grandy did a nice job of fielding all the kicks in the weather again this week, and we'll see a big one that he had returned uh, call back. Nice swing pass out here and a nice gain, and uh, did run a lot of screens, and uh, guy's able to, to get some yards. And I'll tell you, we, we talk about it every week, Coach, but the, the wide receivers do such a fantastic job of, of blocking out on the edge on those screen plays. They do, and, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, a school record. Jesse Grandy had 13 uh, receptions. Uh, but a nice throw and catch there to Clay Murphy. Uh, good job, Clay. Good push by the offensive line. An explosive physical run, uh, which we saw the majority of the night by, uh, by Winrick Smothers. We insert uh, Jacoby Walker uh, for a critical first down. We're down and out of the tight red area. Nice throw and catch to Clay Murphy. And then uh, Terrence Bobo, so many, uh, excuse me, Jackie Hinton, yeah. uh, his first touchdown of the season. And Hinton had a 19-yard run on that drive as well. It was his second longest run of the season. So really showing uh, some explosiveness. And he went over 100 yards for the night. thought our kick coverage was pretty clean. Uh, you know, last week we let one leak out against SFA. Uh, Nichols comes back with their Wildcat package. Outstanding tackle right there. Gang tackling. Good job wrapping up uh, by our defense. Um, and we got to stay inside out. But, again, we don't wrap up and uh, we'll overrun the play, and we give him a huge play. Uh, Jesse Turner, another one of those backs. He's a senior. I'm glad he's leaving. <laughs> uh, Washington's a beast back there. He's, he's just a junior, and you can see him right here bouncing to the outside, and, and, and the big backs have given us some trouble. Yeah, that uh, play to Turner went 69 yards, and it was a very short drive, three plays, 77 yards, and games tied at seven apiece. Well, disappointing the number of big plays that we've given up uh, – consistently throughout the year and uh, uh, once again in the first half it reared its ugly head. Uh, we come back here on the on the back screen. Nice job by the offensive line and the receivers. Yeah, it was a third and very long, maybe a third and 15 at that yeah, point. First and down and a nice throw and catch here to Dominique Kroon. The senior just continues to excel and uh, really pleased how, how he's playing. This is a really nice job by Winrick reading coverages, uh, dropping the check down off to, to Clay Murphy. Into the second quarter now here, and, and Winrick doing a nice job of buying himself some time and then runs for the first down right there. Nice job, and I know it wasn't necessarily designed there, but uh, took what he had and, and came up with a first down right there. Well, I didn't think our red zone offense was as efficient as it uh, needed to be, but uh, you can see here Smothers, uh, good job getting on the ground, protecting himself. Um, right here on third down, we, we take the flat throw to Jackie and just unfortunately not able to Nice tackling by Nickel State, and we have to settle for uh, a Camara field goal attempt. Yeah, that one from 22 is good. 74-yard drive over 14 plays, though, and your first lead of the night, or your second lead of the night, rather, 10-7. Big tackle there by Derek Floyd, uh, the redshirt freshman from, from Dallas. Good job there, gang tackling, wrapping up. And here's another one of those big plays. Uh, just a mistake in, in coverage technique, and... Uh, you know, it's been a theme that we've seen uh, all too often uh, that we did get corrected. Um, you know, Nichols had a run play of 24 yards and pass plays of 69, 79, and 43, and we certainly have to get that cleaned up. Yeah, Klan certainly is a, or Klan rather is a uh, certainly handy with the, with the football. His play action fakes very, very good, and 
and unfortunately fooled your defense there. 79 yards was the, the distance on that one, as you mentioned. A number of explosive plays and something I know you want to get cleaned up. Well, nice throw and catch here on third down to Grandy. Again, one of his 13 catches. Good explosive run here by, by sophomore Willie Matthews from Memphis, Tennessee. And then uh, poor protection there uh, by Hinton. We're going to praise him for his 100-yard game and touchdown, but we've got to do a better job on protection there. And uh, They called it a fumble, but it could have easily gone as an incomplete pass. Yeah, nice tackle there by Roger Jackson out on the edge. And then another play that I guess <laughs> this is the 40-yarder, Coach. Yeah, missed assignment by one of our safeties. Um, and uh, again, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't play, uh, you know, smart football, do our job, and, and play with our eyes. And uh, again, we've just given up too many big plays, and that's got to be cleaned up if we're going to be the type of defense we want to be. We had a blitz called right here, and uh, we had a linebacker not blitz, and the quarterback's able to uh, to sneak through. Kind of a ping pong play right here. We were fortunate that uh, they didn't catch it, and I guess they were fortunate that we didn't intercept the pass. Field goal missed, fortunately. So, Bears uh, keep the score where it is right there and keep it within uh, one score. And then you come back here and, and have something positive happen offensively, which is, is certainly good to see. And Jackie Hinton just ran hard all night, Coach. Yeah, the senior from Shreveport, Louisiana, did a, did a wonderful job right here. We like to have this one back. One of the few drops we had on the night uh, forces us into a long yardage situation, but a, a wonderful athletic effort there by Smothers, uh, the junior from Destrehan, Louisiana. We had nine players from Louisiana, and uh, uh, Roger Jackson, as you mentioned, Thomas Hart, uh, Winrick Smothers, and others. And nice job here by Terrence Bobo, the other senior running back uh, from Atkins. Tried to get us off a quick screen and uh, actually threw it in the back of Kyle Stouffer, who's six foot seven. <laughs> and uh, this was real important points here right before the, the end of the half. Yeah, 42 yard field goal caps an 11 play drive, and that makes it 14 13. So you're within not. Just one score, but one point at this point. Yeah, and then, you know, nice coverage here again. Uh, they try to bounce it out, but uh, I think our, uh, our, our coverage units, our force units are, are doing a nice job, and uh, they just run it up the middle here to try to, to try to end the half. So 14 to 13 at the break, and we'll take a look at the second half highlights as the Bears came roaring back in the final two quarters. Stay with us. Hey, Jay Myers here for Crane Buick GMC in Conway, and we are big supporters of the UCA Bears. What we want to know is what's your favorite bear call? Bear call number one. Bear call number two. Bear call number three. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Vote for your favorite bear call at Crane Buick GMC's Facebook page, plus bring in your ticket stub for an extra $500 off your next purchase. Only at the GM Giant, Crane Buick GMC. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears. Real Yellow Pages, yp.com and yp.com on your mobile. More ways to search, more ways to find. Only from AT&T. Second half now, and uh, Coach, you know, coming out of the break, you, you told us on the air that, uh, you know, you need to clean some things up and, and clearly felt like you guys could take advantage and, and maybe see some, some positive things happen in the second half. And, you almost willed it to happen in your play calling in early in the second half here. Well, I, you know, I think we had some double calls, run and pass, and uh, they were doing some things coverage-wise that uh, I thought we were able, should be able to take advantage of. And again, nice job by Smothers standing in the pocket, uh, hitting Croom on the underneath route. The senior from Cherokee, uh, Alabama. Nice job on the on the crossing route there to Grandy, the senior from uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and then Terrence Bobo. And I thought uh, uh, Coach Brown did a nice job from the box, seeing their spin and rotations out of their secondary and their run support. And Terrence is able to run it in. 18-yard run untouched, 11-play, 63-yard drive. Two fourth-down pickups, I believe, on that drive as well, Coach. And one was a you know a fourth and maybe two or three in your own territory. So certainly trying to make a statement in the second half. Well, trying to show that you know we have some confidence in our defense, and and also to try to create some momentum. And again. Just the big back there, Washington, gave us some problems getting him on the ground. And 
Uh, this is a nice tackle right here by Seth Allison, the senior from, from Stuttgart. Good job, Seth. We force a punt, and uh, what a tremendous effort here by our punt return unit and by Jesse Grandy individually. Unfortunately, it's going to be called back for a hold, but this is PlayStation-type moves and, <laughs> and certainly lightning speed, and Jesse's an electrifying player, but uh, unfortunately he had to come back. Well, he, he got about a 60-yard return there, and instead he gets about 60 yards, well, not quite that many, in uh, pass receptions. Caught the first three passes on this drive, including that one down the sideline. Handed off here to Jackie Hinton Jr. for a big gain and a first down. And then this is, you want to talk about PlayStation, that is ridiculous. Dominique Kroom wearing a defender and somehow able to pull it in there with his left hand. And uh, touchdown's good to put you guys in control at that point. 13-yard touchdown. Well, we had over 500 yards of uh, total offense, uh, pretty balanced. Uh, 289 passing and uh, I think 226 rushing. So uh, very pleased with, you know, our offensive execution and performance. You can see there another missed tackle. And uh, this was kind of a scary play here. We've got to go back and look at that. I'm not sure the young man couldn't have ran and, and made a first down, but they're so scared right now. Grandy had uh, maybe one kickoff return or none. They kicked away from him. And then, of course, after the long punt return, they kicked away from him the rest of the night. Unfortunately, a drive stalls, and this is our first punt in the game yeah. uh, late in the third quarter. An excellent coverage, uh, knocking it down inside the 10. I don't know if his goal was to kick it off of Chase Dixon, but that's what happened, and it worked out fine. Well, we have a poor run fit right here. Got to get this cleaned up because uh, we're going to be playing teams here moving forward in the future that are going to challenge us in the run game. Uh, nice tackle right there uh, by Dylan Winfrey, the true freshman, as we mentioned, from Bryant. And then uh, this young man continues to have a, uh, a monster year, a monster couple of weeks. Jonathan Woodard, the redshirt freshman from, uh, from over in Brentwood, Tennessee. Yeah, named Southland Conference uh, Defensive Player of the Week last week and picked up right where he left off. Three sacks this week. Very impressive. Jesse Grandy, no fair catch on that one and uh, unfortunately didn't, didn't have much room to work. Well, you can see right there Jackie Hint running very, very physical. Um, right there on a the conversion down, we had a drop ball, low throw, but a drop ball, and uh, we're forced to have our second punt of the night. Good job on uh, our coverage units, forcing a nice punt, uh, forcing the fair catch. Another play action here, Coach. And well, you see we're doing a much better job in coverage. It allows our rush to take over. That's one of uh, Woodard's uh, it's the second sack on the night, I believe, one of his three sacks. And Again, just watch right there, Dylan Winfrey triggering. And that's what I really like about the young man. He's physical. He's not very big at five foot eight, uh, but he plays very physical, and uh, he'll be rewarded here later with a, with an interception. Jesse Grandy, one of his 13 catches on the night, as we mentioned, ties the school record, but uh, nowhere to go on that one. Well, really nice job there, attacking the middle of the field. Uh, another throwing catch to Grandy. Uh, really proud of the offensive line for the most part. Uh, they were able to give Winrich some protection and and. Uh, and throw the football as well as uh, create some seams in the run game. Boy, great job right there, buying himself a little extra time, and he turned what would have been a four or five yard loss into a, just a yard or two gain, but you know, net gain of about you know six, six, seven yards right there. Well, that's one of about four or five penalties we had on offense, and uh, this was disappointing because we had the, the slow screen set up and uh, big time play right here, kind of directing traffic. Hmm. Uh, we hit uh, sophomore Des Lewis. One of his couple of catches uh, from, from Mesquite, Texas. And then uh, a conversion down right here. We come back to Winrick. And again, uh, he was probably playing at about 95%. But this was disappointing once we got in the red zone. We were unable to get points. I think uh, Nichols had about nine yards of offense, Coach, going into the last few minutes of the, of the game. And they did pick up some yardage late on their last couple of drives. But uh, nice play right there by, by Winfrey reading the eyes and getting his head turned around and making the interception. Well, he's playing the technique that he's coached to do. And uh, uh, when you do that, good things happen. Uh, once again, though, nice surge by the offensive line. Matthews with a nice run. We've got Jacoby Walker in the game here running our, our Wildcat. Get those pads down, Jacoby, uh, the sophomore from Houston, Texas. He's pretty upright, but he is physical, isn't he? Well, he's six foot two, 220 pounds, and we're, we're cross-training him at wide receiver. And... Uh, uh, we think that uh, we've got to get him on the football field more. And, and right here you can see 
Uh, everybody in the stadium knows he's going to run it, and he's able to power his way in from three yards out. The extra point is good, and Bears win, 34-14. Good stuff. Well, nice win, nice conference win. Uh, I thought Nichols came in and played very hard. I thought in the first half we really created uh, some issues for ourselves. And, uh, you know, I think as a coach, when you go back and you evaluate game tape and you evaluate practices, um, you know, our young men need to concentrate on our fundamentals and, and our discipline and our execution. And when that happens, uh, you find out that you play better. And uh, sometimes we get our eyes in the wrong place or we don't use the technique that our coaches teach during the week, and it creates problems. And then, you know, we play with such an edge. You know, I've talked about this many times on this show. Um, and we don't apologize for playing with the motion, but we've got to show the maturity that when we walk right up to that line of uh, we're not supposed to walk over, we've got to take a step back. And, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we learn some lessons uh, tonight about doing that. All right, let's take a look at our play of the game. And it, we go back to that great pass play from Winrick Smothers to Dominique Croom. And I, I'm still not quite sure how he made that catch, Coach, but he was wearing a defender almost literally and uh, able to pull it in. Well, 13-yard catch and uh, – you know, they're roommates, and they've built quite a chemistry uh, this year, and, and certainly uh, real proud of both of them. And, of course, the offensive line for giving Winry the protection, you know, to make some of these touchdown throws. Yeah, well, it's nice to have receivers out there that can make those plays one-on-one -on -one and having a quarterback that will trust them to do just that. Take a look at our players of the game when we come back. Stay with us. If you're coming to Conway for football, get ready to put your game face on. Shopping, dining, accommodations, and more. Come for football. Stay to play. Learn more at ConwayArkansas.org. The smoked Chipotle burrito is really good. Yeah, my zesty cheesesteak burrito is great. Are you familiar, Pete, with the phrase, don't mess with success? Yeah. Because this is not only messing with success, this is taking success to the cliff and shoving success over. Success said, oh, please, I'll do anything. Leave me alone. These burritos didn't even hear that. They heard, oh, put, and that was it. It was just like, wah. <laughs> egg everywhere. Wake up to sirloin steak and fluffy eggs with the new zesty cheese steak and smoked chipotle breakfast burritos. This is how you sonic. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at our players of the game. We start on offense, and uh, it was hard not to give it to this guy. I don't know who else we would give it to. It was a career night for him and a school record night for him. Jesse Grandy, he did lose out on that punt return, unfortunately, but he did have 13 receptions, a school record. Yeah, 13 receptions, 111 yards, no touchdowns, but certainly a lot of big plays. And, you know, Jesse's a, a dynamic athlete, and uh, all of our wide receivers are playing with a great deal of confidence right now. Des Lewis, Dominic Croom, you saw Clay Murphy. Uh, Jackie Hinton Jr. was catching on the backfield too. Yeah. You know, Terrence Bobo. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had involved our tight end some uh, this year. But, but Jesse's really playing at a high level, attacking the football and then attacking, uh, you know, the defense once he catches it. And he made a couple of nice catches across the middle tonight too, which when you're slightly built, uh, sometimes you don't, you know, want to go across the middle. But but Jesse did a nice job tonight, and uh, uh, he's a big play artist for us. And on the defensive side of things, uh, he had an Academy Award-winning performance last week, and he came back with an unbelievably nice sequel this week, Coach Jonathan Woodard. Well, the redshirt freshman, uh, you know, continues to impress us. And, you know, we talk about cornerstone pieces. You know, you've got Jonathan Woodard at, at defensive end, Dylan Winfrey at corner, and just some nice young players in our program. But, but Jonathan, again this week, an outstanding performance, six total tackles, including in those numbers is three sacks. And um, he's only going to keep getting better and better. And uh, certainly I know you had a chance to interview him on, a, on the radio show this yeah. week, and he's just a fine young man. Yeah, well, he's impressive on the field. He's even more impressive off the field. And uh, certainly a great student athlete and, and a great example for, for UCA, certainly. Our log cabin stat of the game, uh, log cabin Democrat stat of the game, Coach. And I don't know that I've ever remember seeing this, but five of five on fourth down. Yeah, I was feeling a little feisty tonight, a little frisky, <laughs> I guess. But uh, – uh, give credit to, to the offense uh, in general that you know they made good on those uh, conversions. Five for five, 100 uh, percent. We were nine for 19, which is a nice number, you know, nearly 50 percent on third down. Um, but to extend some of these drives, we felt like we need to be a little bit more aggressive. And, you know, and when you do that, obviously you give yourself a chance to score points, which we did. But also it shows that I'm confident in the defense and uh, the way we're playing defense in the second half. 
made a couple of those decisions pretty easy. Well, Coach, safe to say that uh, someday, and I know you're worried about this week, is winning next week's game. Someday you're going to be put into the Hall of Fame here at uh, UCA with your, your career here. But uh, this week we did have a chance to honor the folks who were inducted into the Hall of Fame. The weather wasn't the greatest, but at least they got to be here to witness a win. John Cameron was all AIC in 1986 and 1987 and All-American the same two years. Anita Curry played the post position for the Sugar Bears as that 1976 team headed the program toward prominence in the years ahead. She was the leading scorer and leading rebounder every year she played. Evans excelled in two sports, running on championship relay teams in track and was an outstanding defensive back in football. Mickey led the AIC in scoring two successive years and was the prestigious Meyer Foundation Award winner as the outstanding amateur athlete in Arkansas in 1967. George came to UCA out of Warren and proceeded to earn 12 letters during his tenure, including four in baseball, four in basketball, and four letters in golf. George Jones excelled in all three sports in which he participated, including an all-conference selection in baseball. He Piped through for the Goblins out of the T formation for Harrison and ASTC and switched to tailback when Frank Kuhn arrived in 1955. He was a four-year starter for the Bears and led the AIC in passing in 1952. Robinson had a scoring average of 22.3 points per game in the 1959-60 season and a 21-point-per-game average the following year, and the record stood for 13 years. Bears' record during Schimmick's four-year tenure was 29 victories and only eight losses and one tie. Schimmick played in an era when fewer passes were thrown than today, yet he caught 27 passes in 1963 when the Bears threw only 165 times. Spencer made all-conference as a defensive back and was the Sigma Tall Gamma at National Athlete of the Year as a senior. He led the league one year with seven interceptions. During three of his four years, the Bears won AIC championships. Well, certainly every challenge uh, gets greater, it seems like, every week, Coach, in the, in the conference. And, and, you know, it is a cliche, but I'm going to use it. There is great parity in this conference. And we always talk about how every week, yes, you can lose. I think even more so this year when you look top to bottom, Every game it has its own set of challenges, and certainly every week is a risk. You know, throughout the league, I think we had the fewest number of returning starters coming back for the 2012 season. So every team we've been playing has had 16, 17, 19, 20 starters coming mm -hmm. back. And next week, uh, no different. McNeese State returns a dynamic football team. They were open this week. Another top 20 opponent. Uh, we've got to go down to Cowboy Stadium. Uh, a very difficult place to play, certainly having coached there for three years. Um, you know, we've had some, some really good games there, and, and, you know, we haven't been able to break through there, though. Mm -hmm. And I told the team that, you know, we need to prepare well this week because, uh, you know, given this opportunity, we need to go down there and play well and try to steal one of these games on the road. And certainly we'll go a long way in the conference race. No doubt about it. And they've been, they were the bell cow for such a long time in this conference. But you look at teams like SFA and, and Sam Houston and obviously Central Arkansas now. But, I mean, you know, all these teams that are either in the rankings, and certainly the Bears are and will be moving up hopefully after this victory. But uh, so many schools in the rankings and got to be getting a lot of attention nationally, I would think, the Southland Conference. Well, I think, you know, Sam Houston going to the national uh, finals last year. Mm -hmm. Of course, our, our program uh, won a couple of rounds deep playing into December. I think we're starting to build – more national credibility uh, across the country uh, with the sports writers and the coaches. Uh, but certainly McNeese has been, uh, you know, the, the, the gold standard of our league. And uh, they are blue and gold. So yeah. uh, I think they've got 14 conference titles in their uh, 48 years in the league. And uh, certainly it's going to be a big challenge, but we're excited about the opportunity. It's a game that I always look forward to, whether we're at home on the road. Um, we play uh, for the Red Beans and Rice uh, bowl. It's mm -hmm. resided in, in our building for three of the last four years, but we know, um, you know, Cody Stroud at quarterback, a, a stable of running backs, uh, five or six very experienced offensive linemen, some really talented wide receivers, and a uh, very aggressive and capable defense, along with a solid kicking game. We know it's going to be a big challenge for us, but one that we embrace. We just need to come to work, get healthy, and have a great week of preparation. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be. Good luck this week. Thanks. All right, well, uh, again, it is a, a little bit of a lengthy trip down to Lake Charles, Louisiana. It's a 7 o'clock kick coming up, 6.40 pregame. And uh, for those of you who can't make it, we do want to remind you, too, that it's on ESPN3 as well. So getting uh, some national coverage, Coach. Good luck this week. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks, Justin. All right, we're looking forward to it. We'll bring you highlights from Central Arkansas and McNeese State next week on the Central Arkansas Football Report.